Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Deuteronomy chapter 18. But before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 18. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember that the Levitical priest, that is, the whole of the tribe of Levi, will receive no allotment of land among the other tribes in, in Israel. Instead, the priests and Levites will eat from the special gifts given to the Lord, for that is their share. They will have no land of their own among the Israelites. The Lord himself is their special possession, just as he promised them. These are the parts of the priest these are the parts the priest may claim as their share from the cattle, sheep, and goats that the people bring as offerings, the shoulders, the cheeks, and the stomach. You must also give to the priest the first share of the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and the wool at the shearing time. For the Lord your God chose the tribe of Levi out of all your tribes to minister in the Lord's name forever. Suppose the Levite chooses to move from his town in Israel wherever he is living, to the place the Lord chooses for worship. He may minister there in the name of the Lord his God, just like all his fellow Levites who are serving the Lord there. He may eat his share of the sacrifices and offerings, even if he also receives support from his family. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering, and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. It is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord your God will drive them out ahead of you. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you are about to displace consult sorcerers and fortune tellers. But the Lord your God forbids you to do such things. Moses continued, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me among your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you yourselves requested of the Lord your God when you were assembled at Mount Sinai. You said, Don't let us hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, or see this blazing fire, for we will die. Then the Lord said to me, What they have said is right. I will raise up a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell the people everything I command him. I will personally deal with anyone who will not listen to the messages the prophets proclaim on my behalf. But any prophet who falsely claims to speak in my name or who speaks in the name of another god must die. But you may wonder, how will we know whether or not a prophecy is from the Lord? If the prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his prediction does not happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. That prophet has spoken without my authority and need not be feared. Amen. So what did you think of Deuteronomy chapter 18? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 18 starts off with gifts for the priests and the Levites. So it's, a, it, it's explaining which um, part of the animal is the allotment for the priests and it's saying that they can eat the the shoulder the cheeks and the stomach so that's the part of the animals that they're allowed to have that they can claim as their own and it's saying that the leaves the um the priests and the levites will eat from the special gifts given to the lord for that is their share because they weren't given an allotment of land and um it's saying that also that suppose a Levite chooses to move from his town to Israel 
from wherever he was living. So because he's a Levite, he will automatically be welcomed into the priesthood, so to speak. And so he may eat his share of the sacrifices and offering, even if he also receives support from his family. So it's saying that even if he has um, family that is providing support for him, he can still eat his portion of the sacrificial offering which is given to him. Um, and then a call to holy living. Well, let me rewind. Something that this reminds me of is that um, sometimes in churches today, you'll have pastors who are pastoring part-time and people feel like they shouldn't get paid if they have a full-time job getting paid somewhere else that the church shouldn't pay them. But this is a perfect example of where God is saying that even if they, are have, they have income coming from another source, they still are... Um, welcome to share in the allotment that the Lord has given them. So that means that even if they have a full-time job, that God still expects that they um, are able to share in the offerings received for the Lord. So then the next section is a call to holy living and it says be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. So in this same aspect we're not to imitate the customs of this world. And it says it starts off by saying don't sacrifice your children which I feel like a lot of people do. Um, and I don't mean like laying them on altar and burning them alive but in other non not so literal tra um, transcripts people sacrifice their children you know they push them into success and fame and fortune they um sacrifice them into you know the this world and the things of this world they give them up to um idols because they don't want to take care of them or they don't have the time to take care of them or they don't have the resources to take care of them so in a lot of manners um so to speaking um People of this world are sacrificing their children every day. They're just not burning them on an altar, um, but they're condemning them to death. Um, so it says that um, we shouldn't practice sorcery, um, fortune telling, interpreting omens, engaging in witchcraft, casting spells, medium psychics, um, you know, anything that calls for spirits um, of the dead. Um, any of those things are detestable to God and we should live blameless lives before the Lord. So we shouldn't be involved in any of those things. That's one of the things that I had to give up. I used to love to read my horoscope and I was all into astrology and, and stuff like that. Just, I thought it was interesting. It was fun. I never like planned my day around my horoscope, but it was just fun to read to see what it said. But, um, as a Christian, I know that I can't entertain those types of things anymore. Like that, even if it was just for fun, like I know people have Ouija boards and they play for fun, um, you know, not really thinking they're contacting the dead, but it's just, you know, a fun Halloween thing or something like that. But we cannot engage in those types of things because they do have um, supernatural ties that we cannot be bound to as Christians. And, you know, Christ died to sever those bonds and it's important that we uphold that by not engaging in those types of activities even if it's just supposed to be for fun and not um, you know for real we cannot engage in those types of things and um, you know there's a lot of gray areas like when you watch shows like Harry Potter and then people want to dress up like Harry Potter and like you know play pretend spells and stuff like that or when you have children and they want to pretend to do spells and stuff like that and pretend to be a witch and things like that there's a lot of gray areas there you have to trust in your convictions but I would advise highly against it because just entertaining that sort of thing even if you feel like you're doing it just for fun it opens the door to a world of things that you don't want to be a part of and you may feel like you're doing it just for fun but somebody else on the other side may not agree with you they may feel like you're doing it for real and the next thing you know your whole world's in chaos <laughs> so um and you're headed for for destruction and doom um so then the next section is true and false prophets and I love this part um, because it says the Lord your God will raise up for you prophets like me from among your fellow Israelites. And in verse, what verse is this? 16, it says, don't let, um, it says you said, it says you yourself requested. And this is why I'm so mad because I feel like the reason why God doesn't speak to us today the way that he did like on Mount Sinai is because they told him not to. Like his voice scared them so much that they said, don't let us hear your, the voice of the Lord our God anymore or see this blazing fire for we will die. And God was like, you're right. 
I, I shouldn't speak to y'all anymore. I'm just going to pick and choose people who I feel like are worthy or, or, or whatever. And those are the people I'm going to speak to, these um, prophets such as Moses. And so when you're wondering, like when people ask that question, why doesn't God speak to us today, you know, in an audible voice, the way he did on Mount Sinai and come down in blazing fire, you tell them that right here in Deuteronomy 18, it says, because they told him not to, <laughs> they told him not to. And he agreed. He said, okay, I won't, <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't ask me no more. <laughs> so then it says, I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell the people everything I command him. So in, in this aspect, God agreed with the people and said, okay, I won't speak to y'all anymore. I'll speak through a prophet. But then the question comes up, how will we know whether or not a prophet is from the Lord? And God says that if the prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his prediction does not happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. And this is so crucial because I feel like when you scroll through Instagram or when you scroll through on um, YouTube, there are so many prophets out there and even in churches today you have so many people that are claiming that name prophet but what are they really predicting like are they predicting things only on an individual level or are they predicting like worldwide events when you look at the bible you don't hear about the prophets saying you're going to have a good day today the lord says everything is going to go well for you today no, you don't see that. You, what you see is him predicting the fall of kingdoms, the rise of kingdoms. You see him, you see um, prophets predicting real life events, not just personal individual things that are going on in, in your daily life. Like God said, don't quit your job today. Like, you know, so... <laughs> So just not, I'm not discounting any of those people and saying that they're not prophets. What I'm saying is that when we read through the Bible, the things that we hear about the prophets doing is predicting real life events on a grander scale. And I feel like that's what we're lacking in today's society. We don't see very many prophets out there that are predicting things on a grand scale that are actually coming true. And so it says that, um, if it does not happen, then you will know that the Lord did not give them that message. So I feel like there's a lot of people who are speaking in the Lord's name, but the things that they're saying aren't really coming true. Or it's like a um, fortune cookie or a horoscope where it can apply to anyone, um, but it's not specific. And um, I think that's what's so important that when God speaks, he's very detailed. He's very specific. He calls people in, into places, you know, like when we saw um, when Paul showed up someplace and the people were expecting him already because the Lord spoke to them. You know, these are the types of things when you read through the Bible and you really see how God speaks to people and how the prophets were being used, then it becomes a lot, you're a lot more cynical when you scroll through all those YouTube people calling themselves prophet or I have a prophetic word for you. Um, so it just makes it a lot less uh, believable um, because it should be specific um, to a specific person. They should know exactly who they're talking to and it shouldn't be so broad. Um, but also I will decide just because God tells us something doesn't mean that we should tell others. So also God gives you um, revelations that should be kept just to yourselves. They're not for everybody. And that's, again, something that you need to pray on and have discernment with the Holy Spirit for. So that is my interpretation of Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed. Stay in God's presence. Have a great rest of your day. I love you.